Good afternoon. afternoon. Welcome to all who have gathered here at St. Michael's as we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. During this COVID time, we ask that there is no congregational singing throughout the Mass. We invite you to reflect and pray quietly. The bishop requests that communion is only to be received in the hand. As you leave today, you may drop your collection in the basket at the entrances. Thank you. Please stand as you are able. Sign ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, many people identify themselves as Christians. It is, however, one thing to profess to be a Christian, and another to act out that affirmation. Faith only expressed with words is a dead faith. The gospel parable today shows that God is interested in how we live our lives, not in how we profess our faith. God is interested in how we express our love for our neighbors as we love ourselves. Let us ask the Lord to forgive us for the times we do not live out our Christian faith. Lord Jesus, you cautioned the Pharisees about putting on an outward show of piety. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you help us to do good works for others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to the same full faith in God, your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together now let us pray the hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, 
You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue, to commit iniquity and dies. It is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard your others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, 
tax collectors, and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet, even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus seemed to be a holy man, a man who shared God's holiness to an extraordinary degree. Why then did Jesus associate so readily and easily with sinners, with people like prostitutes and tax collectors? Jesus' associating with notorious sinners did not mean that he Proved of their sins. But by showing compassion to such people, Jesus hoped to fan the glowing embers of goodness still in them as God's children. He knew that love can warm and soften the hardened heart more powerfully than stern condemnation, the kind that the religious leaders of Jesus' day were ready to pronounce. To illustrate the contrast between the outcasts of society, the sinners who heard Jesus Jesus gladly, and the religious leaders who rejected Jesus' message, Jesus told the story we just heard. One son said he was on his way to help his father to obediently carry out his command, but never went never did what was expected of him. He is like the religious leaders of Jesus' day. They said to themselves and to God that they were keeping God's law better than anyone else, but really they were only going through the motions. Their heart was not with the Lord. Jesus warned them outwardly, performing religious duties as useless if it doesn't spring from the inner faithfulness to God. For Jesus said, (coughs) Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Deeds done from the heart, not mere words on the lips, make our faith real and life-giving for ourselves and others and pleasing to God. The first son in Jesus' story at first refused to obey his father, but later changed his mind and went into the vineyard. He is like the sinners of Jesus' day. They heard the words of Jesus and saw in his example how their heavenly father was calling them home, and they returned to the Lord in repentance. They eagerly responded to the God who had sought them in love. Thus, Jesus could warn his hard-heartened and self-righteous critics, tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. They were entering into a new relationship with God, not because they thought they were better than everyone else, but because they knew they needed God's mercy more than anyone else. And they found it in Jesus. You and I, we are both of these sons. And thus a story contains a warning (coughs) and an encouragement for us. It warns us that it is useless to do religious practices if doing so makes us think we can have a claim on God. No one has a claim on God. God has a claim on us. An absolute claim based on God's infinite love for us, not on our good deeds, We all fall short in responding to God's love and need to seek God's forgiveness through repentance. The first son in Jesus' story brings us this warning. The other son brings us encouragement. God knows that we try to do what is right humanly and therefore imperfectly. 
God sees the difficulties with which we must struggle. When we stumble and fall, like those sinners whom Jesus befriended, we have only to ask God to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Admit us to the kingdom of God's merciful love in this world. The kingdom that Jesus gives to all who are ready to accept it. And then we will be able to say in the words of today's responsorial psalm, and this isn't quite correct, but it's this another psalm. It says, your words, O Lord, your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Together now, let us profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell on the third day. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us pray for the needs of the church, the world, and ourselves, asking for the grace to be grateful and forgiving people. For the church, that we may be a witness to Christ's love by practicing charity and promoting justice and peace throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord for government leaders worldwide, that they may recognize the grave responsibility that comes with power and may protect the persecuted and work for an end to violence and war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, that all men and women would turn to Jesus with their whole hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we might always let our yes mean yes when we respond to the Lord's call in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the homebound and for those in nursing homes, that they would experience the consolation of the Holy Spirit in the midst of trials and loneliness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the consecrated life, priesthood and diaconate, and for all those preparing for marriage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithfully departed, especially for Dave Pfluger, for whom this Mass is offered, may they rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we bring our cares and concerns to you, aware that we are also sinners who often must change our hearts and minds. Forgive us when we judge others and grant us the gift of gratitude and compassion so that we may be like Jesus who lives forever and ever.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and stewardship of treasure may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Merciful God, grant us that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. Jesus always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, Jesus announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your daughters and sons. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <laughs> You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always, who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and once, as once for his disciples, so now for us, Jesus opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave his father thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until Christ comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, Bring your church to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Holy Father, Donald, our Bishop, 
with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. And all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Cloud, St. Michael, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, may the Eucharist restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We have a young lady from the mission office who's going to give us a few words. It's the deacon's daughter. We'll see what she's learned. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Teresa Trout, and I'm the mission education coordinator for the St. Cloud Mission Office. And like he said, if I seem like a familiar face, it's because I grew up as a parishioner here at St. Michael's. I was asked to come and share a little bit about our office, mission, and why it's so important today and every day. This weekend is World Day of Migrants and Refugees and Immigration Sunday, and we are reminded of the ways that we are called to be in mission to each other, around the world, and right here in our communities every single day. For those of you who are tempted to say, hmm, I don't know, I don't think I'm called to mission work, I have one question for you. Were you baptized? <laughs> we are called as Catholics to go out and preach the gospel and to be the gospel to the people around us. And that's what mission is. Now there's a lot more I could say about that, but I don't have the time to get into all the aspects of mission. However, I really want to encourage you to find ways to incorporate mission into your everyday life. This could be as simple as donating to a local or global organization, getting more connected with our office, reading about the lives of people like Father John Kaiser, a missioner from our own diocese, and at a most basic level, praying for the world and those in most need of our prayers right now. Especially today, I encourage you to pray for all immigrants, migrants, and refugees throughout the world. In Pope Francis's letter for 2020 World Day of Migrants and Refugees, he writes, in each of these people forced to flee to safety, Jesus is present as he was at the time of Herod. In the faces of the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, the sick, strangers and prisoners, we are called to see the face of Christ who pleads with us to help. If we can recognize him in those faces, we will be the ones to thank him for having been able to meet, love, and serve him in them. This is mission. This is our baptismal call. I will be out in the gathering space after Mass if you have any questions or would like any more information. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Teresa. Even the deacon and I don't get a clap after our homilies. <laughs> Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. Amen. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel with your lives. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.